Good morning. Thank you for coming to today's presentation on estimating. We have two presenters, John Hurran and Paul Lawrence. Both are builders, both are industry consultants, both are construction educators with a lot of experience. The presentation on estimating given by Paul and John is a breakdown of the discipline of estimating. John will give an overall presentation on how to put together an estimate and the things and processes that you must consider to ensure accuracy. Paul then will drill down further and look at a particular unit in estimating that a lot of people tend to forget. That is the covering of your overheads, the covering of your costs, and how you will then incorporate that into your list of the final figure that John Hurran will outline. Our first presenter, John Hurran. Good morning. My name is John Hurran. I'm here to talk to you today about um, some of the fundamentals about estimating, from the quantity takeoff through to the estimate itself. Estimates start from a quantity takeoff and end in an estimate and go on further to purchase orders and so forth as the job proceeds. I, like many of you, started my working career as an apprentice carpenter. I then moved on to things like uh, supervision and subcontracting. And then when I got to the stage where I thought, I'm ready, I want to be a builder, I sought some advice from an old builder that I'd worked for in the past. And I went up to him and I asked him, oh, well, made the statement that I wanted to be a builder. And I thought, could you give me some advice? And all I got in response was a question, you want to be a builder, eh? And during the conversations we had, he said that every building office has only got three important things, and that is good documentation, good documentation, and good documentation. So he said, when you get to a point where you're actually estimating and doing a quantity takeoff, it's no different. You need to record meticulously everything that you do. His advice in part was as follows. Always be sure of where you are headed. Two, always be sure of where you're at. And three, always remember where you have been. Those comments were relating to not just estimating, but the way you would conduct your business. On point one, he explained that you need to do meticulous estimating. Don't take shortcuts. Don't try and speed things up, be accurate, methodical, and go from the beginning through to the end, recording everything as you go. He said, accurately take off all the materials and labour, the quoted items, the contingencies, statutory fees and charges, holding charges and the overheads, and profit. All of the things have to be accounted for within the estimate. With regards to the materials and labour, that is a fairly diverse area of any estimate. It can um, be unit rates or composite rates to make up your estimate. Your labour and materials come from various sources. So you could have a situation where you have labour only suppliers, like subcontractors. You can have supply and fixed subcontractors. Um, you can have suppliers that um, supply small amounts of um, materials, some that supply lots of materials. An example of quoted items would be things like your roof trusses, your, um, your um, roof tiles, your windows, fascia and gutter perhaps, those sorts of things that you would outsource quotes for. Um, when we're getting into contingencies, they're things that you have to take account of that maybe happen. It doesn't necessarily mean that it will happen, but cover the cost of unknown things that could happen. Statutory fees and charges, quite clearly, they have to be accounted for in as much as that the BSA just don't say, oh, well, I'm sorry, um, you might have forgo forgotten to put the, the BSA fees in. Oh, don't forget next time. It's all right this time. You need to cover all of those costs. Holding charges mainly refers to things when you're actually um, building spec houses and the like, where you've got land tax and rates and insurances and so forth. Overheads and profit. 
do not underestimate your overheads. Overheads are one of the most important things to take consideration of from the point of view that they can be ongoing costs irrespective of how much work you've got in progress. So you must take account of your overheads and profit. John, can I ask, we'd be in a, so a renovation that allowing a small percentage over the cost of the job uh, for unforeseen structural changes such as you know you might have to put in uh, new floor joists or new bearers Absolutely. or take stumps out or Absolutely. even finding uh, termite or, or uh, water damage would that would that be an example of contingency Absolutely those are the things that are that you may be suspicious about but or may think could happen but there's no definite um, occurrence of them at the beginning. So you might put aside a small percentage of that cost. Put, put, with, put with, aside an amount to cover those contingency costs, absolutely. With a new house, what would be an example of a contingency? Do you think it would be allowance for, I don't know, crane hire or extra bins in rubbish removal That, or that could be exactly the case. Um, different sites uh, create those sorts of situations too. Uh, zero lot alignments um, where you've got might have to get a crane to get something in that you didn't think you had to get in. Um, costs that uh, occur that weren't originally budgeted on but uh, you really need to cover the uh, possibility of it happening. Job costing too, this is a bit digressing a little bit but it has an impact on how you do your estimate and your takeoff. Job costing is where we actually compare the actual cost against the estimated cost, which is pretty vital during the running of the job. Um, and why it's important at the estimating stage is it gets back to how you record and collate all of the information when you're taking off the quantities and putting it into the estimate. So we have to have some method where we can compare these costs. So we need to cost, compare the cost of the actual cost of the um, foundation materials at the time the foundation is completed because if you don't wait, if you wait until the end of the, um, the job to compare these costs, you never have an opportunity to recover any lost monies. So in fact, everyone makes a mistake. With estimating, you can have three uh, things that can, three of the major things that can cause overruns is underestimation of the cost. Um, the use of more materials than you accounted for and time factors can take a, um, a toll on the actual outcome of the, the job. So as far as um, job costing is concerned, you really need to start from the beginning and work your way through. So we put a cost centre to each part. So foundations might have a, a cost centre of three. You move on to something else like um, carpentry might have a cost centre of seven. So when you take off your quantities, you have to put them in an order whereby you can then relate the actual cost back to that, to, to that uh, cost centre. The earlier you, are, you identify an overrun on cost, the more opportunity you have to recover that cost at a later date through the process of the job. You might get cross quotations from different suppliers and so forth to see if you can reduce the amount of loss if you do find that you've overrun on a, on a certain part. That gets us back to know where exactly you are at all times through the project. Just don't start it and go from beginning to end. You must know how things are stacking up as you go along. Manage your cash flow. Another important issue relates to um, how the, the, the job progresses. And remember, not a single saving can be made once the job is completed. So it all relates to how you take off your quantities. John, can I ask, where, when you say know exactly where you are at all times through the project. Would you relate your takeoff and your costings to a some form of scheduling graph? That's one way. Um, I would do um, uh, like your budget. You can break your budget, job budget down. Um, and that all relates back to your cost centres as well. So that as you print out or uh, summarise all of your costs, um, you can then compare the actual creditors' invoices to those costs as you go. And this is a pretty important point, point number three that he pointed out to me. He explained that his historical records are a wonderful resource. Not every job's exactly the same, but parts of, of uh, lots of jobs are the same. So if you have good historical records, and this gets back to your job costing, if you can 
um, open up that information and refer to it at any time in the future, then you have, have a great resource there with help when you're doing estimating in the future, particularly when you're relating to things like labour costs. Um, what do you do? Do you sit down with a pencil and paper and say, oh, that'll take me one hour, two hours, three hours to do something? And that's a very legitimate method of working out how much time you need to spend on these jobs, as far as the labour component is concerned. But as far as the um, um, historical records go, if you've got a job that's similar to one you've done before, it's very, very useful to be able to go back to the information recorded and compare it so that you can use that information in a new estimate that you might do. I, in fact, did a time and motion study on myself when I first started to produce my um, estimating software and I timed myself on every task that I undertook, whether it be laying out bearers and joists or uh, fabricating wall frames, and I related that back to a metre rate so that I can use that within composite rates as I built them at a later stage. I did that on two or three jobs and then I had the ability to take the average or the most time consuming parts of the job and relate those back to a, to a, to a task. Recording of invoices now, you know, you might say that's got nothing much to do with estimating but it really does have an impact on how the actual costs compare to the estimated costs. And don't be afraid to adjust your methods of estimating as you go along. Experience is a wonderful thing. You can be taught in a classroom about um, methodologies, but experience is really the thing that teaches you the most. Mm -hmm. Your opinion on builders using uh, books out there like Cordell's or Rawlinson's that have all this data for, for quoting jobs, or is that something that would be worthwhile? Or Absolutely, for certain parts of the job, there's no question about that. Um, for example, even in domestic construction, you might have a situation where it's got a set of uh, concrete stairs and you've never ever done those before. Cordell's is a wonderful resource for looking up the cost of those things to, get to, to make sure you've covered your costs. My experience with those products that are available is that it really does, in certain circumstances, have an effect on your competitiveness. Their rates tend to cover all the costs to the worst case scenario, which is not a bad approach, provided you can, you can secure a job. But the bottom line of the thing is you've got, you've got to be able to secure the job. Mind you, once you secure the job, you don't want to be losing money on it either. We're not doing it for the exercise. What about the, the big one where builders would use the a square metre rate? I'm going to cover it. square metre rates, and uh, that's one of my pet, one of my pet hates square yeah. metre rates. Um, clearly, you could take a multi-million dollar house or a very inexpensive house and you could relate a square metre rate to something. One square metre of plasterboard ceiling in both houses could cost exactly the same amount of money, but it doesn't relate to the overall cost of the houses. And I'll get into that in a little bit more detail. So don't be afraid to adjust your methods when you're estimating, and that's from your experiences. When I come to estimating, this builder that I admired very much said the three most important things about the estimate in a simplified statement is as follows. He said the estimate has to be fast to prepare. It has to be quick to prepare because you don't get every job that you tender on. And I'm, I'm speaking from the perspective of being a competitive builder here, not just a subcontractor. But you, you have to have um, the ability to produce an accurate estimate as quickly as you possibly can. Um, when I first started um, uh, contracting, what I did was I meticulously took off the timber list, right down to Safit battens, every single part, to the, to the last screw that was needed for the doors, hinges, locks, everything, collated them perfectly costed them up or sent those um, quantities out to be quoted and came back and with a great feeling of satisfaction I arrived at my contract price, put in my tender to the, to the prospective client only to find that the, the accepted quote was around about what my net costs were. And it didn't take me long to figure out that I had to have a way of accurately coming up with a cost 
without spending laborious hours working out every nut, bolt, screw and hinge in the house. And I'll cover that in more detail as we move along. Estimating, he said, the first step is it has to be quick. And I found out very early in my um, contracting career that that was the case. The second thing is very, very obvious. The second thing about estimating is it's got to be accurate. And it's got to be accurate because if you get the job, the whole purpose is to make a profit and not to lose money. It's got to be accurate. And the third thing is the estimate has got to be understandable. And I cannot stress this part of the estimating process more strongly. The estimate has to be understandable because as your business grows and you introduce perhaps a supervisor, he has to be able to take what you've produced in your quantity takeoff and your estimate and put that into practice on the job. So he needs to take what you've done, have a total understanding of it, and then proceed in a fashion that's going to be profitable and complete the project in a timely manner. The other point about it being understandable is that as you're progressing through the project, your memory might be clouded by several jobs you've got in progress at the same time. You need to be able to have some sort of hard copy to which you can refer to refresh your memory about the way you'd actually undertake your estimate. Quantity takeoff and estimating is important no matter how big the job is. It doesn't matter whether you're putting up a fence for Mrs Smith down the road. Just don't take a guess at what it's worth to do the job. The quantity takeoff has to be done in a, in a fashion which can be followed, understood and costed properly. You must take into account everything. Even the smallest of job, jobs you have to take into account things like fees and charges, establishment costs, uh, labour costs, material costs, overhead costs and per perhaps even ongoing maintenance with some jobs. In addition to that, of course, you can't forget your profits. I'll just give you a brief definition of what I'm talking about when I speak of quantity takeoff est and estimating. This is where we break our estimate into two parts. The quantity takeoff part is to do with the taking off of all of the materials that's required for the job. It's the act or process of measuring and quantifying what is required to complete the project, everything that's in that project. The estimate is the act of costing all that had been quantified during the takeoff process, including the costing of statutory fees and charges, labour and materials, overheads and holding charges, contingencies, maintenance and profit. If it's got to be costed, it has to be taken off. Don't leave it to memory. A house consists of more, just, more than just labour and the materials. You have to take into consideration all of the things relating to that particular job. All documents relating to the estimate need to be meticulously collated and recorded for future reference. This is vital. Don't rely on your memory. You might remember things, but do you remember it in the detail in which you meant it to be done? Irrespective of the method employed when you're doing your, your estimate, whether it's manually done or by computer, it must be done in a logical fashion. Don't pick up the plan, look at it and say, oh, it's got a tile roof, I'll cost that. Work in a process from beginning to end. Build the house in your mind as you do the quantity takeoff. It's got to be understood, and it can't be understood unless it's in a logical process. It's got to start at the beginning and end at the end. Don't get parts mixed up. John, can I ask a question? Just on that very last statement of yours, do you feel that's one of the greatest uh, problem areas where people who are doing a takeoff for an estimate get 